On March 29, 1976, Meyer took this outstanding series of photographs of three beam ships hovering over a wide valley near Bachtel Hornley. It is an extreme rarity to capture three UFOs in the same photograph, especially with the clarity of these. But to Meyer, this remarkable photography had become commonplace. The video crew hiked to the site where an old farmhouse stood near the edge of a steep mountain cliff. This is the location where Mr. Meyer filmed both still photographs and 8mm motion pictures. Meyer remembers that when he first arrived at the site, he was nervous, excited, and wanted to begin the experience immediately. Then, without warning, the beam ships arrived. As in previous segments, the ship is not affected by the strong wind currents. He also noted that they repeated the same stable movements exhibited in the past. In the lower part of the screen, automobiles can be seen traveling on this major thoroughfare. Meyer captured the same scene with one addition, a UFO hovering overhead. This amazing footage captures known objects, cars, and an unknown object, the beam ship, on the same frame. Here, the Japanese utilized the freeze frame technique in order to determine the size relationship of the beam ship to the car. This 1979 NTV footage shows the site where Meyer shot his 1975 sequence of the beam ship hovering near a farmhouse. As this footage dissolves to Meyer's original film, Note the beam ship beginning an aerial display above a large tree which once stood near the farmhouse. Maya recalls that he was guided telepathically to the location and that the weather was bad. Snow and rain fell throughout the day. Once again, the erratic movement of the craft gives the appearance of an object suspended by a string or wire. Close examination of the film clearly shows the craft circling behind the large tree. When the size of the beam ship is compared to that of the tree and the house, it becomes obvious that due to its size, it would be impossible to suspend with strings or wire. In addition, the top of the enormous tree can be seen to move as the craft passes over it. This movement can be attributed to the backwash of air created by the ship. Watch again. Once more, the branches can be seen to sway from the force of the beam ship. Mysteriously, within three hours after the filming, Meyer noted that the tree began to die. Inside of three months, the tree was gone, leading to the conclusion that perhaps the electromagnetic radiation or energy contained some harmful elements that might have killed the tree. This segment clearly illustrates that the Pleiadian beam ships are capable of transcending dimensions at will. Watch closely. 
the craft is seen hovering in the upper portion of the screen. Then suddenly, it will literally jump down to a point just above the knoll in the lower center of the screen. You see, if she jumps, there is always like a flash on the knoll. Now we will examine the film frame by frame. Analysis failed to detect any alteration or trickery in the film. At the moment of the dematerialization or jump, the scene becomes very bright, unreasonably bright. Could there be a correlation between Meyer feeling and electrical shock during the contacts and the film becoming brighter? Now, analyze the beam ship's dematerialization scenes we reviewed earlier. Three frames prior to the disappearance, a green exposure is observed in the lower part of the scene. The same phenomenon occurs within three frames of the return of the craft. It is believed that this film indicates that the beam ship is emitting some sort of energy within 3 20ths of a second, just before the ship dematerializes or rematerializes.